Hey, welcome to Florida Keys Life. I'm Reagan. Jason, right here. And Easton. Easton, let me. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is on. flat calm today. And we're gonna go shoot something, which isn't been super common lately. It's been a lot of wind, so today we're gonna jump in the he's water and do go. some spear Dad, fishing. He's he's, he's like oh, is he? Go. Okay. Yeah. So we're taking the advantage of the calm water and going spear fishing. Oh yeah. He's so top of the base. come with us as we enjoy that. Just a Thursday in the Keys. Nothing to see here. Welcome to Florida Keys Life. All right, here we are, guys. Man, water is nice. We're sitting at 82 degrees. It's clear out here. The winds like less than 10. 10 Not foot even. of water. Six and uh, Reagan's gonna learn how to spearfish today. Yep. Whole spear. Okay, thanks for joining us underwater here. This particular spot we go to often when we just want to snorkel around and see fish. I have spearfished here a few times, um, but I slow this clip down just so you can see the different species and the amount of fish. This was one of our first dives when we got to the spot. And it's just amazing how you see uh, wrasses, grits, all kinds of stuff uh, you see there. And so this is an amazing spot. Uh, I'm going to try to narrate the best I can of what we do here, uh, but there's kind of three main parts to learning to spearfish, and I'm no master at it. I mean, I've speared a few fish, but I'm no Key West waterman here. And so Reagan is just getting used to it. So she's learning to free dive, for one. She's getting better at it. She has a little bit of a problem clearing her ears occasionally. But the three parts are you got to be able to be a pretty decent free diver, for one. Um, and two, you got to be able to work the spear gun. It looks like it's a simple thing, but it's not. You got the using, you're using different muscles than you're used to, and grabbing different parts, and, and learning how to do that. So she wants to learn that. You see that big angelfish there, and there's a Spanish mackerel. And this, this reef is just loaded, and it's only 10 feet. It's really close to our house. We love going here. And you see these artificial concrete blocks that somebody put down here in these grates. I'm assuming somebody was trying to make some sort of a lobster shelter. I don't know. Um, but anyways, getting back to the spear fishing. So then you got to learn how to work the, sp the pull spear or the spear gun, whichever one you're using. I think it's a pretty good idea to start with a pull spear first. And so that's what she's going to do here. Um, another neat thing to point out in the screen, you see the ripples in the sand. If you're a diver, you know this, but you follow the ripples to the sand and that leads you to shore if you're ever underwater and trying to find your way back, by the way. Uh, getting back to the spearfishing again, so... Learning to free dive, being a pretty doggone good free diver, so you have some bottom time. Uh, second, learning to use pole spear or spear gun and then third you got to learn how to stock fish or hunt fish essentially which I'm not, not a master at um, I mean I've hunted a lot in the past uh, on land uh, but not so much in the water and so I've watched I've actually learned on YouTube mostly how to stock fish primarily here I realize I just wanted to give an okay sign but you can't do a thumbs up when you're diving because that means go up so then I corrected myself and realized I gave the okay sign. Uh, and this is just uh, just me diving. I mean, it's only, we're talking 10 feet here, so it's not some kind of a big dive, clear my ears, head down, and pretty short dive. I'm actually not a very good free diver here either. Um, definitely something I need to get better at. And here Reagan's just learning to practice, and, and she's doing some free diving, getting used to the water here, and then pretty soon you'll see her graduate uh, to the pole spear. There's Easton. Easton's with us here, and he's taking a dive on some fish. Um, he's got good, from what I've seen other people who are much better at it than I do, a good type of posture where you punch the gun out and, and you try to stock up on the fish on a, a 
a level shot, you don't want to shoot your spear or gun just right into the coral or, or the ground. Um, you see those beautiful little wrasses in that deal, and there's a sea urchin in that little coral head. Uh, Easton shot uh, his spear gun here, and his spear got stuck in the coral, so he's going to retrieve uh, his spear from the coral. Just amazingly calm. You can see those shots where we okay, come go up to the, the bottom water. How just it. flat it is. It's Ooh. just a beautiful day. Put tip cable off. You got to put that on and use the rubber bed to pull the string back. So, and it's difficult to me. I mean, it, it uh, nearly bruises your hips to bring it in and pull that band back. And my gun is a smaller JBL gun. I actually don't even bring it out in this video. Um, and it's just a two-band small gun. It's nothing great. Um, but it's really difficult to pull those bands back. I mean, that's a kind of a different muscle group for most people, even for me. And uh, it's not easy, that's for darn sure. See, Reagan here is having trouble with the, the slip tip on my pull spear. Now, my pull spear is a big, heavy one. You'll see later she grabs Easton's, which is a much easier pull spear to work with. Um, with the slip tip, you just pull the streak, string back with a little, uh, just like a small, tight rubber band. This is one of her first dives on the fish, and it's not the best approach, but she does this several times, but she's learning. I would have looked under this ledge over here. How you learn. On this particular spot, I wanted to go down and look under this cave. I was kind of kicking myself that I didn't bring my dive flashlight with me and to be able to look under there. I'm sure there's, if there's not a grouper there now, there has been in the past. I mean, we're only in 10 feet of water, but I've seen black grouper just off of this reef before. Uh, but I can't see under this spot, but I'm sure there's something cool under there. Uh, right on the edge of this particular reef system. That's here. By the way, I just want to point out, I have seen in this particular reef um, the biggest nurse shark I've ever seen in my life. I, mean, I had to look up what a pregnant nurse shark looks like after I got home to see. You, see, you just see how many how many fish are on this spot. She's almost, she gets dist distracted by how many fish are there. It's really tough when there's that many. By the way, these fish are, are called blue striped grunts. And, uh, they're very plentiful. They're legal to shoot. There's no minimum size limit. And they're actually good eating. You don't get a ton of meat off them, so you need quite a few if you're going to try to get a meal. But those are those are good eating fish. A grunt is pretty much as good, eat, good as eating as a mangrove snap or anything else. They're just smaller. As she's following, you see here, she, does, she takes a shot at this hogfish. Fortunately, she just hit it and didn't penetrate and hurt buddy. it. Pointing out to her that that wasn't a keeper. So that's another tricky part about spear fishing is you got to be able to judge the size to make sure it's a keeper when you're under there and you don't you can't if the fish isn't gonna sit still if you just whip out a tape measure, <laughs> take a look. So it's just something you got to learn. Reagan finds this awesome comp here and they have a foot inside of that uh, and that's how they move around. And so it's important that you put it with the shell down so they can move. She drops it and doesn't land that way, so I head down to get it straightened out there. Again, I just want to point out that this spot is just so loaded. You see a, a gray angelfish inside of there. They're pretty protective of their nest. They usually kind of have a particular nest together there, but is super neat. Uh, this particular coral head is really a neat looking coral head in the world. <laughs> Let's go take a break and I'll get my spear gun. 
And here, this is where Reagan grabs uh, Easton's pull spear, a much smaller, lighter pull spear. The band isn't as strong um, and has a three-pointed tip on it, um, which is pretty cool. So she's just following the school, and you just see how massive the school is. There's just a ton of those fish. It's a good spot to practice spear fishing. To translate, she didn't want to hit the rock behind it and get the pole spear stuck, which is a legitimate concern. When you're fishing with that kind of tip, it's not the biggest issue, though. She'll learn. And she goes. better approach is a cope on a school of fish a ways away before they start moving and then you go down and you, you swim on the bottom to them check out this new spot see what happens this is Ethan's spot just off Bay Honda see what's in the water Okay, we're at this new spot. It's a bit deeper. It's 20 uh, to the bottom from the surface of the water. And we swim around. We're looking for hogfish or anything else. We don't find anything great at this spot. But we did find this abandoned lobster trap. Now, lobster season is closed. You can't have your traps out. This one's been left. It does have a buoy at the top of the water. I'm not certain of what all the rules are or what you can and can't take. I'm pretty sure you still can't take the trap. So we leave the trap. I did go down. This trap is loaded. Oh my gosh. Okay. So uh -huh. Easton! Okay. Well, we're going to let them out. Uh, we can harvest them when it's legal. So anyways, yeah, we're just going to let them out. I did one of the first dives I went down and I stood on the bottom and tried to pull it up to see if I can get the trap off the bottom and it's been there so long it's buried in the sand. No. So much seaweed on it. I went down trying to find the latch to the door that opens in the middle and there's so much seaweed I couldn't find the latch. They're starting to come out. By the way, you've heard it a few times and coming up, you see Reagan here had an ear problem. She couldn't clear that time. She is really good at blowing these bubbles, by the way. Anyhow, this humming you'll hear in the background, hear that? That's a boat. It's quite a ways away, but it's amazing how far you can hear boats under the water.
So there was four or five lobster in that trap, but this was the biggest one, I think, if I remember right, that came out. And we could have left them alone, and we tried, we poked them out and prodded them out until they came out of the trap. They would have crawled out on their own, but we just wanted to see what we could do. So Reagan follows this lobster around, he, she kind of pokes at it with her pole spear to see what it does. Mainly, I guess, trying to get it to the grass and seek shelter. But ideally, we want these lobster to go away and grow up and either get bigger or make more lobster. Alright, spot number three is real shallow. We're still looking for this hog heaven that uh, Easton's talking about. But we do have sand, we've got grass patches on the edge. All the fish can hang around here, we'll check it out. We'll come back on here if we get something good. So this spot's real shallow. Uh, we do end up finding some lobster spots. We're mainly looking for hogfish or something to spear, but we just want to check it out, mainly get in the water in this third spot. And we get a nice surprise coming up at the end. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is to point out I'm wearing my SeaTech shirt. Now, it's a very comfortable performance shirt, I just want to point out. But it's durable enough, and it's, it's a special kind of material that it can act as a rash guard. And that's essentially what I wear it for. And coming in and out of the water, it's essentially no difference. Most performance shirts I have cling to you and do weird stuff. This shirt does not do that. It feels as comfortable in the water as it does out of the water. Uh, and it you know certainly prevents uh, any sunburns or any rash against rubbing against coral or, or reef or such. So I really like it. And you do get a discount. If you use the code KEYSLIFE20, you get a 20% discount which you'll have that information in the description. He's little. Can't keep him anyways. Now this was a great day. Perfect kind of day in the Keys. Great weather down here, and we get a special treat as we're getting out of the water. Um, I look back as we're pretty much done here, and I thought there was dolphin in the area. So I grabbed the camera, I jump in, I don't even have fins or nothing. I grabbed a mask and the camera, and they were so, the fins were coming up, they were huge. I thought they were dolphin, they weren't. They're tarpon, you can see the school swimming off. We get a better shot of them. And these were not just your run of the mill. 50 pound tarpon these were like 100 pound plus tarpon these were big it's kind of hard to tell from the camera but these tarpon were as long as easton and i big fish it was a really special moment so we appreciate you watching this video uh, please like and subscribe we're trying to grow the channel as much as we can fuel's not cheap your subscription um, and your watching of this video helps pay for that so have a great day